sure what I titled it. Um, I meant to uh, fix that, but I uh, I didn't. So I should have titled it. Um, if you want to just learn something worth learning, right? Can you guys hear me okay? Am I blasting your eardrums? Check one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two. <laughs> you like it? All right. Is it better? Does it make me sound better? Thumbs up. Can I get a thumbs up? Can you hear me? Thumbs up. You can hear me. You guys want to learn something today? All right. I guess you can hear me. Thanks, Robert, for clarifying that. All right, guys, I ran I ran over some good information today, and I wanted to share it with you guys because I think it's something that it was just really good information to know, all right? And and a lot of you guys may have heard of this book, um, The 48 Laws of Power, right? And some of it, you know, to have my own opinion, it's like a little bit, it's kind of, it seems like a little manipulative, stuff like that, but one of them that I really did like, okay, was law 10 and it's infection avoid the unhappy and the unlucky these are people that would come and go in our lives all right it says judgment you can die from someone else's misery emotional states are as infectious as diseases you may feel you are helping the drowning man but you are only participating in your own disaster the unfortunate sometimes draw misfortune on themselves they will also draw it onto you as so associate with the happy and fortunate instead a lot of us don't want to associate with people like that because we feel unworthy or we feel like um we we won't be accepted or something like that you have to find acceptance within yourself before you can ever expect to find it in other people you know what i mean that way you know exactly who you are because there's going to be all walks of life throughout your life right because this is a, just an experiment experience we're all learning and just Hopefully evolving during this experience, right? Of life. I don't like that color. I like this one. Well, I like that one. That one's a little better, I guess. But yeah, so finding acceptance within yourself. Know thyself and that to thy own self be true. What's up? Um, Autry, how are you? I hope you said a name. Praise Joshua. Teddy, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Thank you guys for the follow. Clarissa, thank you for the follow. Saints, 83. Good to see you guys. Good to see you guys. Which Bible you read from? Um, just the King James Version. This isn't the Bible, though. This is just, uh, this is the 48 Laws of Power. And um, this, I, I read it, I was, I've been reading it. And this one was really one that I myself needed to really understand. Which was avoid the unhappy and unlucky because it's like an infection. It can infect us. Like, okay, have you ever had a shitty day, right? And you're like, in the store or somewhere you don't want to be and you're just trying to get through there and because you know the energy of most of the time you know the energy of other people and you know one smiles at you it instantly you smile back right and it changes your mood even if you force yourself to smile it, it tricks your brain to thinking oh okay I ain't, nothing's wrong <laughs> that's why I laugh at myself a lot <laughs> Oh, thanks, Teddy. I'm glad you're listening. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's true. Because, I mean, people that are unhappy and unlucky, which I've been that person, you know what I mean? But maybe it was because of the people I was in company or whatever. Look, if, if somebody doesn't want you at your best and they are clearly showing that to you, why hang around? They're clearly taking your kindness for weakness or like you don't have other options. Or that you don't know your value. If you don't know your value, you could be the most stunning man, stunning woman that walked the face of the earth. But if you didn't know the true version of yourself in the mirror because of what everybody else has told you, you're never going to have that confidence to be that person. Thank you guys for liking the video. Um, thank you guys. Thank you guys. Yes, surround yourself around positive people and things. It's hard to find them, though, sometimes. And it's like, who's genuine and who's not? You know, for some reason, we've been underneath the spell. I, I, I think we've been underneath the spell, like, as a civilization to make us all me against you, me versus you, or, like, 
I have this and you don't or this, you know, it's always about materialism. It's not about like, I'm not going to try to bang your husband because he's good looking and has a good job, <laughs> you know, because you're my friend. I love you. I would never do something like that to hurt you. That's morals that a lot of people don't have that. They don't care about that. They're all just for themselves. They can't self reflect as like, what if I was that girl? I don't want to be that or that man. I don't want to be that one getting cheated on. Right. At pray for discernment. That's facts. I was, you were thinking about that? That's awesome, Righteous Rebel. I like your uh, name, Righteous Rebel. I like that. I, I consider myself a Righteous Rebel. God don't want no punk on his team. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> he really don't. And uh, like a lot of us that like didn't come from religion or whatever, and we still got, we were just chosen. Like, it's not like it's something to glorify because it's, it's a walk of isolation sometimes. There's a lot of things different than you have to unplug from society and all your norms. And that can be, that can take a toll on your mental health. But as you start to become and you grow into the fullness of what, why God even picked you, because you chose him too. Don't, don't get it twisted. You, there has to be an agreement, you know, an exchange there. It's uh, not like, um, you know, it wasn't my choice. You know what I mean? But I went with it because I didn't have nothing else to lose. I mean, yeah, I had a career to lose. I had a house to lose. I had, I had all these things to lose. But internally, I didn't have anything to lose. And I felt like I didn't have no support. And, and I still feel like that sometimes. And that could be a perception of my own, like, illusion. Because I don't ask for it. Because, like, every time I needed somebody, they didn't meet my needs. So I just, I'll do it myself. And I won't even ask anymore because I don't want to get let down anymore. You know what I mean? But there has to come a time where the right people are going to come into your life just like you. And have the same intentions that you have towards the world. You know? And that's special. And a lot of times, like, we get psychological warfare, like, to where invasive thoughts, where we want to just end our lives and things like that. And these are the genuine people of the earth. That is a lie from hell, you guys. And I want you, if, and if this is somebody, if I'm tapping into somebody's energy with this, you, we need you out here at your best. And I want you at your best. So you got to quit hanging out with these people that have these infectious, low-vibing infections. Spiritual warfare, too. I mean, you got to think. Everything manifests in the spiritual realm first, right? And you create these soul ties and these savings bonds like I in my YouTube video <laughs> talk about savings bonds because you're, you're bonding with people right you're bonding with this individual that's time time you're never going to get back ever in your life and don't be giving a piece of shit your best you're at your best right now don't waste it on some douche nozzle <laughs> you know what I mean even though they have their purpose <laughs> but it's time <laughs> to discard it and, and heal just heal heal yourself from that relationship instead of jumping into a new one I don't know if I'm making sense to anybody on here because I'm definitely not talking to myself. But, like, a friend of mine always said to get over one, get up underneath a new one. And I always thought, I was, I was like, oh, that's contrary to that belief because you're not healing. You're basically putting a Band-Aid over it and it's giving you artificial a connection. You see what I'm saying? Like, replaceable connection. That's, that's uh, what is it, superficial, wishy-washy? We don't want that. I just let our creator send positive people and things to me. Just pray about it. Yes. Thank you. You have those. Yes. We have. Yes. Thank you, guys. See, you guys help me self-reflect. Yes, you are making a lot of sense of truth. Thank you, Robert. Yeah, same problems. Different person. Uh, I love you, too, um, James. And God bless you, too. And, you know, the strong, being strong, you know, not a lot of people check on the strong one, but. One thing about it, and two things for sure, is that you get your comfort from source, from the most high. And you can't forget that. Because it's easy to forget it when you are in the in-between. The in-between of, of like, shedding that old skin, trying to rewire your brain, trying to get yourself where you know you're destined to be. And then you got that in-between zone. Oh, man, it can be a really just rough time. I've been, and I, like, I've been there, and I'm, I can still find myself there. You know what I mean? Where 
I don't want to be seen. I just like, cause I don't want to be hated. Like people instantly hate my existence. And it's, uh, that's my, that's how I feel. You know, whether it's true or not, it could be false. I don't know. I didn't ask them, but that's how I've always felt, you know, going around strangers or a crowd or something like that. Like, yeah, I might be able to fit in until I open my mouth. <laughs> and that's when everybody's like, hold on. And I'm thinking, do they think I'm the evil one just because I'm different? When I'm just, I don't have that mentality of like me versus you or she's prettier than me or I, I just, I don't, I can't think that way. It's always just been, I appreciate a good looking human being, you know what I mean? And, uh, never would, could imagine hurting somebody or persecuting somebody for the way they looked. I'd be taking it up with the manufacturer, the one that made me, <laughs> you know what I mean? Not, not another creature. <laughs> or a human being, <laughs> whatever, you know what I mean, we gotta think about this, because that's the spirit of jealousy, and it'll keep you from yourself, your authentic self, and it's not, it's not fair for you, neither, like, to even have that ideology of that, like, me versus you, you know what I mean, let me get a water real quick, guys, I'm, I'm uh, parched, <laughs> I'm parched, but no, yeah, so I wanted to read some of this with you guys um, and go over it a little bit. Just to spend some time with you guys. I haven't seen you guys in a while. But um, I do want to, uh, I'm not going to be on here very, very much longer. But let's see, what are you guys saying? I always thought I was the only one. I, You know what? I, I remember crying, like literal cry. Like I freaked out about it when I was a teenager. When I, I was, I think I was picking shoes out for, for school or something like that. And they were these big oversized Converse with uh, just green. And they were, they, everybody else had like these different, I think it was Fat Farms or something like that back in like that time. And I, I didn't want them. Like, you know what I mean? That wasn't my kick or like, it just wasn't my, I didn't want to follow the status quo. I like those shoes and they fit me and that's just, they kind of look like clown shoes, but I didn't care. I liked them, but I remember grabbing them and thinking, I'm the only one left. I'm the only one left that doesn't give a fuck about the shoes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what are those? The sea the turtles don't say that. Like, the birds don't say that. You know, like, obviously there's, you know, an animalistic side of it. Like, two bears that fight for to mate who went like who gets to what who gets to mate the one that wins right that's mother nature's way of making sure that the dominance gets to spread its seed not the weaker one and like that should be something that i mean i'm not saying that should be you know violence is the answer or anything like that but maybe just the dynamic of of who that person is versus who that person is you know what i mean and looking at it like that Instead of just going with the flow or settling for less. Because settling for less can leave you with resentment. Not only towards those around you, but yourself. And I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Okay? Because we want you at your best. Over here on this channel, with me and God over here, we want you at your very best. Even if that means doing better than me. That's what I want. That's what we're here for. I'm help I, Me and God are here to help build leaders. That's it. So, if, you know, if you're a follower by nature, then follow. But I, I want you, the leaders, I'm calling up to the leaders. The ones that have that thick skin. The honey badger-like skin. The honey badger is cute as a button, right? But he is a bad mamma jamma. He can take a machete blow. He's almost bulletproof, like Neo. <laughs> but he, he's, and he's uh, immune to the venom of the snake, right? The, the poisonous snake can bite the honey badger. And it don't phase him because when they're when they're, they teach their young at a young age to get a little dose of the venom here and there, right? So they are immune to it. So when these serpents, humans, come to try to throw venom at you, you're already immune to it because nobody's been harder on you than you. You're you're the leader, and you're you may be looking for a leader, and you are the leader. <laughs> so try to lead the best you can, you know. I, this was my deal. I'm like, God, I don't want to be up here leading people in the wrong direction. Or maybe I'm not, maybe that I'm not hearing from God. There was always all these doubts, right? But the more I just trusted and put myself out there and threw some of this knowledge out there, there was nobody watching, nobody hit, no, but no views, nothing. I didn't care. 
I still was doing it, right? Just to get practice or just to see, you know, with myself. And so as that happened, like I prophesied the, the, the um, earthquake and I had no idea. I was in Texas, right? I was crying. I was panicking because I just left. On, God told me to leave, right? So I just left. Didn't tell anybody I was leaving. And I had my daughter with me and my dog. And I'm like, I'm down here in this nice apartment and everything. But I was still scared, right? And I was laying there. And I seen a vision of people wearing gas masks. Not like the COVID masks. Like real chemical warfare masks. And tanks rolling down. And it looked like American streets, right? And then I heard prophesy a massive, <laughs> a massive earthquake from New Jersey to New uh, Hampshire and I'm like after I, all this happened I sit up right and I'm like I'm, I'm losing my mind I'm like what if it don't come true you know or you know what if I mean, what if I'm just making this shit up I, I really didn't understand it right but I said well you know what I was just talking one day and it just came out and then all of a sudden it happened and I didn't even know it happened right Nobody's, I didn't need no recognition from anybody else this was me and God, right? Like I needed to know for sure that what I was saying was not just BS or just some kind of illusion, some weird thing I've caught on to or something. I just wanted to make sure to double check that it was thoroughly that. So when I did that and that happened, it blew my wig off because I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow. So God, you really are using me for that. Like, that's unbelievable. I didn't know. So how are you going to know unless you just try if you're hearing stuff like that and you keep getting that urgency, just do it. Who cares what other people think? It might just show you, you. And that's what the whole experience really needs to be about, is you seeing you for who you are and who God created you to be and not hanging out with these infectious people anymore. I love you guys, okay? Well, you guys are following to be a leader. Look, I, I was a student well before I was a teacher. Well, wait, a long, I've been, I'm still a student. <laughs> I'm still a student every day. But teaching is something I, I'm, I'm not only passionate about, but it's my purpose. It's why I'm here. It's why I'm breathing. It's why I'm before you, you know? It's, and, like, to be around the youth, to teach the youth, I would love to do that, too. But I cannot go with their weirdo stuff you know what I mean like <laughs> if it's uh not feeling right it's just not gonna I'm not gonna be able to do it because I just it's that's the youth of our nation there that should be taken way more seriously than it does you know and like my daughter spends eight hours more time with them than they do she does me but that's just how it has to be for now I mean I would love to homeschool her but Sometimes mama needs a break, and she, I want her to get an education too, like, you know, but not the bad shit that she's going to be learning from other kids. You know, like, you know how kids are, you know, they're just, I guess I'm just trying to save her from the world, and it's just, she's her own individual self. And that there is something that a lot of mothers can release themselves from that burden. Like, I'm trying to raise my own daughter as she's me. She's not traumatized. She's not, she hasn't went through the things that I went through when I was her age. So I need to quit coddling her at, like she has, you know, because it's, ma it's, it's making her feel entitled and just un unappreciative. And, it, and then it makes me not want to bond with her very much like I normally would, right? Anybody that don't feel appreciated ain't going to want to hang out. I mean, it's just, especially if you've been wounded so many times and shoved around so many times and you're pouring all your finances, everything you have into this thing and they don't appreciate you, it kind of just sends, it gives mixed signals, you know what I mean? And that's another thing that Satan wants is you having those mixed signals with your children, like to think that they're a burden or something like that. And that's your lineage. Like, she'll come out of it. You t teach her the way she's supposed to go, and she'll n always know them, right? Like, Miley Cyrus, she turned out okay. I turned out okay. I have my little uh, time. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but we have to mature and grow out of that eventually, and uh, some people don't. Like, unfortunately, my mother, she's still a teenager in her mind, you know? But she wanted to be my friend. She never was a mother. 
I didn't need a friend. I needed a mother. I needed guidance. I need some somebody to tell me, you know, I was just free, free, free to do whatever I wanted to do. And I lived it up. Let's say that. But I'm glad I got it out of my system. You know, and I got it out of my system. I've been there, done it, and I don't care to keep circling around in that phase of numbing not only my pain, but thinking I need alcohol to have fun or to be sociable or things like that. You know what I mean? Like, I, I want to be able to sit, like me and you are sitting here in real life and not feel like I need to, ooh, it's just real sensitive, you know? Try to dim myself down, wear a hat, wear sweats, you know, like, so nobody, you know, and that's just not me. I'm not saying I love to be seen, but I do like, I like to look pretty, but every woman does, you know what I'm saying? But I don't do it for other people. I, I do it for myself. And I know one thing, I come on here in different phases. Like you guys have seen me in bed, uh, crying. You guys, you guys have witnessed a lot of ups and downs throughout this, this journey, right? Of just my life. You guys just watching it, but it, it's never been about vanity neither. Like, you know, I get dressed up and stuff and sometimes I don't even leave my house. And I'm just being transparent. Just because I like to just play around with it. Because it's uh, something I really didn't notice before. You know what I mean? And that's what I'm talking about. That false illusion you can have towards yourself. Because of other people always saying, always trying to knock you down a peg. They're going to try to humble you, Chosen. They're going to try to humble you with everything they have. And they don't realize that... <laughs> Pride's been stripped from you lifetimes ago, and all you have is humility, and that's genuine. Like some people think you're who you say they think they are. They have no idea the trials and tribulations you've overcame to even be able to show your face, let alone, you know, live in it and be able to be comfortable in it. Your own skin. You have every right to have to be comfortable in your own skin, and I. It, it doesn't matter what shape, size. It doesn't matter. You need to love you. And the more you love you, the more it's going to shine. It'll be within, comes without. The heart will make you beautiful with no makeup, nothing. I'm telling you, ever since this walk with God, my life, my quality of life has improved tremendously. Or that's how I tested it. Am I serving the right God? Because I wanted to know the truth. And I'm so open-minded, I didn't know. Like, is it a control issue, this Bible? Are they just trying to control us? And I'm like, hold on a minute. Yes, in a way they are, but in a good way. So why are we knocking it? We need guidance. We need some type of control or some, you know what I mean? It's not bad control, you know what I mean? So I looked at it that way, but I really wanted to make, I, I said, God, if you're real, show me the truth. And boy, oh boy, three years later, <laughs> here I am. And the truth, it goes so, so deep, and a lot of people aren't ready for it. And I'm not ready to deliver it, neither. Um, not at this time. Because a, a lot of people won't, I don't think, will be able to, to, to hear it, if that makes sense. You know you are because you and daughter are blessed. What do you mean? I know I'm what? I, well, I didn't know how, I didn't see that I was blessed because I just wanted acceptance or like approval or just, you know, whatever. Other people aren't seeing it like that. And I'm trying to put myself in their, like that third person's perspective of what they're seeing. And, you know, the reasons that I, I'm not getting acceptance or whatever I might feel is going on. And it's like they I don't know if they know or if they even would care to know or if it would make a difference if they knew but if they understood that all I was trying to do was um, show them that they can do it too you know what I mean like I, I've come guys I've started from the bottom so many times I've lost everything everything and when I, I due to my addiction and I mean it's it's been one of the, I'm telling you right now, addiction is one of the, like to substances, is probably been the most hardest battle I've dealt with throughout my whole life. And I always said by the time of 18, I'll quit. I'll quit by 18. Uh, 28 years later, 
you know what I mean? I was found myself. I wasn't doing. I was. I improved a lot, but I wasn't where I wanted to be. Screw the popular opinion. Screw what other people think, or if they know or not. This was something I wanted, right? For me, like I wanted to be functioning at a healthy, normal pace without any substances. Like that was what my wish to just be normal without it, right? And it's it's slowly it, it was been it's been a lot of hell. There's been a lot of dark nights, but God, sh- I you know I'm shedding out of it. You know, even now, like I might still drink wine every now and then. Like I'm still shedding out of it. But, you know, that's part of the journey, guys. It's not going to happen just like that. I got another. Damn it, I forgot to grab that other book. Um, I'm going to grab this other book real quick because I want to share this with you um, before we go, okay? And, uh, hold on just a second. Here, I'll turn on the music so you guys can listen to some. Uh, you guys should hear me play the violin. <laughs> oh, my God. That's some funny shit. I'll be up here playing my violin. All right, hold on. I'll be right back. Alright, I'm back. My dog, he's so crazy. He thinks I'm up here kicking it with the cat, I guess. And he gets all jealous. <laughs> He'll be all <gasps> anxiety. And I'm like, Galaxy, the cat's in the other room. I'm not. He, he thinks that we're all cuddled up up here. <laughs> German Shepherds are like kids. Or worse than kids. He's down there all anxiety. I'm like, I'm coming down there. Just hang on. Okay, but. Real quick, I want to, uh, sorry guys, I'm not going to engage him. Every day we are spilled your battle between good and evil, we are the light. It's so hard too, like, sometimes we just get tired. Like, why the hell am I always having to fight? Why am I always having to go against all this shit? It's, the energy shifts, do you think they're going to just give it over without a fight? We have to take it by force, just like in heaven. When all that shit broke out in heaven, same thing. We have to take it by force in the most uh, like honorable way you know what I mean but it's good to allow the Lord to uh, tame your tongue the Holy Spirit allow him to tame your tongue because what you speak is so powerful you speak life or death literally with the power of your tongue and your emotions but if you let God you know you lean into that obedience you'll hear it before you go to react like when i was in texas when i was still in my wilderness and pruning stage like my neighbor was testing my gangster hardcore and at first when i first met the, the woman the holy spirit was to stay to yourself and i was like well i want i want i want to try to have a new friend i want to try to have friends i want to try to you know, have a normal life down here, right? Away from my abusive ex. And, you know, I, I just, I was like ready to, no, no toxic family. Nobody even knew where I was. It was like my little safe haven, right? 22 hours away from home. But she, I, she, she was friendly at first. And then she ended up being a whole jazzy. And I'm like, wow, I can't believe this lady is acting like this. It just, it was blowing my mind. It made me feel like a lunatic because of the things I was going through. Like, I feel like she had a cup on the wall all the time. Like, you know what I mean? Trying to listen. And then I thought, I was, no, you're being paranoid or something. This this is a young lady. She's got her own life. She's not worried about what you're doing, Caitlin. And she was. She would videotape me on her phone and everything else. And it was just the most bizarre thing. But she hit, she hit my wall, right? And this was after she called CPS on me. She made my life hell. She said I was, she said that I wasn't even in the state of Texas when the call went out, right? I was already flying back to Kentucky. And the CPS calls me like three days later and they're like, well, we had a complaint about you um, threatening to choke slam your kid. I'm like, what? 
<laughs> they said that the, somebody heard you say you were going to choke slam your kid. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, that don't even make sense. I mean, in a joking manner, <laughs> I could see myself maybe doing that, but never like, I'm going to choke slam you. Like, it was just bizarre. But it ended up, it was just, the whole thing was a mess. But so after that, it was already tense, right? And I already wanted to, you know, yank her up. But God, she hit my wall one morning after all this. And I wanted to take my foot and just kick it straight through the wall. And God was like, what? You aren't going to say nothing. You're not going to do nothing. Vengeance is mine. And I'm like, <laughs> <They're t> <laughs> like please. Because she just wanted to get that out of me, right? And you letting God tame yourself now i wouldn't get like i'm cool it don't their um their little shit they try to pull it don't phase me anymore i'm like neo i just dodged a bullet and keep it going that was training training ground where was it at holy spirit show me which one you wanted first i want to go over this one with you guys real quick because this one was profound this this come at the right time it's galatians all right 112 for I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. And there's other versions of it where it's not, it, it comes from the, I guess, the spirit or something like that. This is the, the Bible is knowledge that was galactic, right? Galatians, galactic, it kind of fits, right? There's so much about like the cosmos and things like that in scripture that we don't e we didn't even know about that they, they didn't the, you know most churches don't t teach about it because they don't want you that your inner knowing your inner truth that you might not know is there to be confirmed and because they are they're government funded most of them are okay so but that's not my i'm not that's you know i mean that's god to judge not me so, um, okay, human beings always make mistakes, and we all have made mistakes in our lives. Do not have any regrets. Rather, you have redemption through his blood for the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of God's grace. That's Ephesians 1.17. Even in our mistakes, God's got us covered. Before the foundation of the world, we have been chosen and called by God to walk with him and walk into the destiny predestined by him. Only coming into fulfillment if you get God involved in your life, total submission to the Holy Spirit to lead. So in your future decisions, let your decision pass through the throne of God's grace and mercy in your time of need. Let us, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence. Did you hear that? Let us approach God's throne. This is in a spiritual realm. Like, make your petition to Him. Make, make your, you know, make your wants and needs clear. So that way, that so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need, because a lot of times that's all God's all I had, and I think He, I didn't understand why I was all pity me, poor me, but I didn't understand that God needed me alone. He needed me to not have nobody else to lean on. So first of all, I wouldn't ever forget about it, and throughout anything, I know that I don't need anybody but what I already know I have, which is God, which is within. He comes within, right? The kingdom of heaven uh, is within. And then let's see, what was the other one? Um, there's there's something here that it, it talks about how, like, a lot of us are worried about, like, the devil and these, like, spiritual um, streets of, like, uh, witchcraft and, like, you know, doing all these weird stuff that they, they do. Like, that I, I wasn't even aware of a lot of it till seeing certain people's videos and stuff. So I'm not going to give any, like, information as far as what that, what they do. But, like, because there's still a little bit of misinterpretation as to how it works or whatever. But it makes, it's starting to make sense to me. But then I got to go back to the word. There's words saying that there is no curse that can fall upon us because of the blood. If you feel like your uh, health's being attacked, your evil eyes coming against you, you're, the, you're, the blood is keeping you, the stripes of Yeshua is keeping you invisible. You're not even, <laughs> they can't, or you can't see me, dun, dun, like that uh, song off Tupac. <laughs> Blind stairs with a million pairs of eyes, never realized, something like that. Okay, here we go. A joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. I do know one thing, that God picks the brokenhearted, the one broken in spirit. 
because we're not going to forget about him and where we came from. We're not going to forget our roots. Everybody might think you have, but you, they don't know you behind. They don't know you sincerely. You know what I mean? They can all make their assumptions. But me, I know where I came from. I'm proud of where I came from. And, the, you know, if, if, if I win, my whole team wins. You know what I mean? And if that's just me and my kid, <laughs> then that's just us. Know the deeds of the flesh. These scriptures guide our lives and guide our conduct to build our character in God. The Spirit of God must champion over our flesh. That's why we got to fast to tame it and to flush that parasite out. I know this might be a little bit too much information as far as that goes, but it's like a demonic parasite, right? So fast, just like Jesus, he said some of them have to be fasted out. Tame your flesh. That's the best way to do it because you're literally denying your flesh of what it what it needs to be fueled like a car you know what i'm saying like a car with gasoline same thing so yeah don't get involved in an infectious group of people where it's going to infect you to where you're gossiping or making assumptions or just tarnishing people that you don't know if you don't know the facts there you're wasting your time even going there Put your energy on you today and make the best version of you. Don't worry about what anybody else is doing. Have blinders on and keep your eyes on Jesus and his commands. And the promises of God are going to manifest in your life. And this is to catapult you, okay? If you're catching my frequency right here. And it is lonely. Um, it is lonely. Righteous rebel. It can be so lonely. And I'm right there with you, sister, because I haven't... I've been... I. Uh, it's been a while, but God's not going to, the spirit, they won't, you won't have the wisdom that you may have asked for or something with other people around. And that's just, that's the way it is. I mean, unless they're like right there on your forte, you know, or whatever, but isolation is needed for spiritual wisdom and spiritual ranking. So you're doing the right thing. You know what I mean? If, if, if you're on, you know, if you're on that righteous path of just trying to become who you're supposed to be out of all the trauma and all the hell that you probably went through. Cause I know the, like it broke my heart to read that scripture that God picks the ones that are broken in spirit and broken hearted. Cause it's like, man, I've already been like whipping, you know, domestic violence survivor, like big time. And I didn't want nobody to know. I was embarrassed. Like, I kept it hidden for a really long time because I didn't want to be that single mom. I didn't want to be that girl, you know? Like, that was something I never saw myself being was a single parent with, you know, with a daughter to raise. I just... And it, it got so bad to where, I mean, one of us was going to have to go, literally. Like, because <laughs> I was on my snap, like, on the brink of a snap. <laughs> I mean, I could, you know, we all, we all have that breaking point, you know, and it was there. So I'm so glad that that's over with you guys. Like I, I look back on my life and I thank myself for how, like every version of myself that I was, when I was the, when I was a dope fiend, when I was this, when I was that, that was the only way I could survive throughout all that trauma that I experienced. I thank myself for every phase that I have been because it got me to here. I forgive myself and a lot of you guys got to do the same thing. That's going to set you free. Trust me. Go back and thank yourself. I don't care what you may have done. It Because that right there could have been the only thing that kept you alive in that time. And I'm being sincere. Because like speaking from my own experience, like I was, I was soothing my pain in you know ways that everybody else you know wanted to condemn, but I wouldn't have survived. I would have turned the gun, you know. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have made it. So I thank myself on all those stages because if it wouldn't have been for that version of me, I, you know, who knows? Who knows where I'd be? Probably behind bars or something for life or something crazy, you know. So. But I remember a lot of nights pleading for God to change the situation, and you know, He did in the most <laughs> abrupt way. I, like I said, I lost everything a couple times, and it, <laughs> but it changed. 
And every tower moment that we go through, we come back shining even better. So if, you, if, you're, if you're experiencing your tower, just know you're going to bounce back like, oh, crack. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, we're done. All right, you guys. I love you guys. Um, yeah, I will let, hold on. Yeah, I would let be here that I know. Um, oh, yeah, you wouldn't be here. That, yeah, I know. Like, and give yourself... Like, champ, we are the champions. Because we are the champions, my friend. We'll keep on fighting to the end. Come on, guys. We are the champions. We are the champions. No time for losers. Because we are the champions of the world. <laughs> all right killed the song i'm done <laughs> but yeah keep on fighting because there's there's always going to be a better day tomorrow and this loon this lunar eclipse should should have should be making y'all wake up feeling a little better and looking at yourself like holy shit <laughs> we made it because <laughs> you did you made it whoever i'm talking to i love you leanne my day one angie angie's my day one for real <laughs> we are the champions <laughs> <Don't play wicked. laughs> wisdom yes I, I love you too with much wisdom comes much sorrow guys that's one thing that i missed out <laughs> i missed that part when i asked god for wisdom <laughs> i missed the whole with much wisdom become like much comes with much sorrow but you get through the sorrow part and it, it builds thick skin you're gonna be able to withstand any kind of thing like any anything you're gonna be able to stay ground rooted in it because you know yourself first of all know yourself and to yourself be true and that is with god you know what i mean uh dallas is in the building hey allison how are you doing yes ma'am uh we have come for real the day we met i know i know angela it's crazy gotta go get my kiddo you uh, you know what you t uh me i'm about to do the same thing um i love i love you too thank you for um for the follow if you just ran across across me guys he is making us fireproof we went through that furnace of affliction just trusting like my god's gonna bring me out of this fire and he brought you out not even a not not a, not even a hair on your head was touched maybe it was by some assholes or something like that but it you know you guys know what i'm saying the first of affliction i think is isolation phase it's not the it's not the times before you didn't know who you was and you were getting whipped around like a rag doll you know but this too shall pass was something that I held on to a lot for the first, I guess, from the age 14 all the way till 27. It was this too shall pass, you know, and it's just that's real talk. You did. God, I couldn't imagine that, Leanne. I'm sorry you went through that. But look, you made it, though, right? Well, I've lost a few, but you can't tell. I've lost a few, too. <laughs> Are you talking about <laughs> hair? Yeah, I've lost the old patches. <laughs> it's not funny, but, I mean, it's real-life stuff, you know? It's like, God, man. Ripped my whole side of my hair out. Uh, I don't. I can make comedy just about <laughs> anything. But, it, uh, it you know, it, that ability can help shift the, the fighting. You know, try to like easy, take it easy on me, <laughs> but don't ever stay around anybody that's abusing you. That bastard should have been uh canceled out of my life, but you know what? He couldn't because I had to have my daughter first. If it wouldn't have been for her, oh man, I don't know if I at least if that just having her kept me from destroying my own self. That's what Satan thinks for the chosen. They're going to just, it's okay. I don't have to do nothing. They'll destroy themselves by themselves because we're good at setting whatever we set our mind to, we're going to do. 
And a lot of times it's self-destruction because of the rejection. The, the rejection is God's protection. And listen, just be, you're doing your best, okay? And that is enough. That God's grace is sufficient enough for today. I don't care if you're confused and don't you feel like an urgency, but you don't know what to do. Just be still and know that everything is going to become clear and the directions that you've been waiting on, they're going to come right in right when you least expect it, okay? And always get it confirmed with God, okay? Any messages that you receive from me and or anybody like that, okay? I love you guys, okay? <laughs> Especially where you gave birth to her. I know. I know, dude. That was horrible. Like, in the way, I, I don't want to go into it much, but... I'm lucky to be alive, just put it that way. You know, I was thinking that blood transfusion. It's just like them, they were they they were totally had they had free reign to do whatever they wanted. I was at their mercy, you know. That was that was just I I, I wish I could see from a third person's point of view throughout the whole thing. Like the lady that was there, I wish I could get a hold of her and just talk to her, see what happened. Because she waited and she was pale. She was sitting there, she's like, I can't believe you're alive. Because I kinda jumped up bounce right back on it which is like magic <laughs> i'm not being cocky because that's all praise the most high but because it's happened a few times where i've just came out of it you know from from taking too much substances and stuff like that I, i've fallen short of the glory of god many times guys but a righteous man falls seven times but we stand again can i get an amen we do we really do we bounce back every time if you can stay you just got to have that inner voice i don't care if it's mine keep yourself going in that uphill posture till you get to your final destination that equals the whole equation of why you're here each every last one of you guys have has a purpose you guys have a unique fingerprint you guys have a unique voice and it matters i don't care if it's only one person or a tree or a bird you're talking to it matters because you matter and whatever weird things you do matters. Who cares if the people that that the majority are lost anyway? The majority don't even know who they are. So don't care what the majority thinks, okay? Especially to my youngins. My youngins, I really have a I have a heart for you guys, man. God. I wish I had somebody like me to talk to when I was a kid. Would have helped me from a lot of shortcomings, but I was too ignorant to listen. I thought I knew it all, you know? And now I know that I know nothing so but i do know some stuff <laughs> but i love you guys okay and um actually you are one in about two hundred thousand genetically speaking well like i mean so i guess that's kind of a bad thing isn't it i would hope so i would hope there's other there's more me's out there <laughs> hello 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 is there anybody in there just not if you can hear me that's how i feel like when a lot when i'm talking to some people but i would hate to think i was the only one there are only so many ways you can mix genes um i'm i i know ex i kind of feel like i know where you're going with that but i i don't fully not when it comes to me personally because I, maybe you know something that I don't about me. <laughs> a lot of it that's been there. <laughs> We're not alone, Chris. And when even if you are alone, like at night in your bed, and if you know you wake up and you get that scared feeling or that like you just wish you had you know some something there, just know that you're not alone. You probably got another brother, or sister in Christ doing the same thing. <laughs> intercede for each other guys because i've interceded with prayer for for you guys for the body when i lost it for myself you know what i mean so it just your intercessions count so much god god showed me that like if it wouldn't have been for people that i don't even know praying for me before i had any clue of what i was to do right i wouldn't have made it this far so the intercessors for the body it's just like wow man the hearts some of you guys got it's like a lion all right not like the one that's devouring shit the one that you know of judah <laughs> i do love you guys um and 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 karma right now the justice scales are being balanced 
you know and I, I call it the karmic clock i know that's like not the typical like by you know person that does the bible thing to say but it's just the duality i mean it's i don't know how else to explain it to your 21st century mind so i say it that way you know the scales are being balanced god's vindicating you right now in ways that you don't even know of and that's that's amazing that's why we serve god like we do because there's there's plenty of benefits but there's plenty also trials and tribulations and tests and you're going to pay us them all like with flying colors in jesus mighty name i love you guys until next time stay prayed up stay strapped in the word and the physical if you want and stay up love you guys peace thanks for watching